You said September 19th, Irish banks are resilient and have good shock absorption capacity to cope with the current situation. Do you regret making that statement now? Absolutely not. I think uh, the issue that uh, was facing the government this week uh, is connected with the supply of uh, liquidity in the international financial markets. It's very important for all members of the public that they have access to cash. Banks are the source of cash for members of the public. You need cash to go about your daily daily lives for the economy to function properly. The supply of cash in the international markets has been drying up for a number of months, but the world changed a couple of weeks ago with the collapse of Lehman Brothers. I think after that there was great nervousness in the international financial markets. We saw a flight to quality. We saw banks unwilling to lend to each other. We saw banks preferring to deposit with the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the Fed anywhere but lend to each other. And that affected the Irish bank that cash to, to supply cash to the economy. But and that was a great it, it, worry. Isn't that just, at the very most, only a partial reality? The reality is a fundamental weakness in the Irish banking sector and that's an exposure to a crumbling property market. Completely different issues altogether. The issue facing us today... And Was that not the source the of the days, potential collapse of banks here? I don't accept that at all. We'll come to that in a minute and we'll talk about the activities of banks. But let me say, the issue that was facing the government, and I have to say the prompt response of the government was addressing a very serious... We're saying they had no confidence in the Irish banks, and the reason was that they had lent recklessly in a crumbling property market. We'll deal with the lending in a moment. No, no, I'm just I'm asking just, that question. That's what the market that. said. I'll Do you not recognise there was a fundamental weakness in the banking sector aside from global conditions? I just want to, first of all, deal with the issue that faced us today. No, you've already explained that. My okay. question to you is, all right, let's move do you on accept then... that there is a fundamental weakness in the Irish banking sector and that's its overexposure to the property market? I markets. do not accept that at all. These issues are totally unrelated. The issues of lending, the loan portfolios, the risks in the loan portfolios are addressed by having appropriate levels of capital in place. And in fact, the regulator has been very active since 2006 in putting these measures in place. Why didn't and you stop fact, the kind of behaviour that was described in the Illness Report, for example? Why weren't you thing, stopping, for example, people can get a loan six, seven times their salary, 95% mortgages? Why didn't you stop that the behaviour? The important thing to make sure that the banks are adequately able to deal with the challenges that may emerge as the economy weakens is that they have adequate levels of capital to absorb any losses. Let me ask and you about the issue of how exposed the banks are. Now, there are over 100 billion outstanding loans to property developers and builders. How much of that are they going to get back? I believe there will be certain impairments over the next couple of years as the economy declines. What are we talking? Are we talking the about 5, 10, 15, 20 billion in bad loans? You can't speculate about that. So the how can you say the banking thing, system the, is sound if the, you don't know the level of bad loans? The important thing is that difficulties emerge in a loan portfolio in the normal course of the life of that loan portfolio. Just that's quantify what day, for me the difficulties. That's then, what day-to-day -day regulation is all about. That is our day job. Our well, day respect, job Pat is Mary, about... The taxpayer now has a potential liability. I'm asking you okay. now about the solvency of the banks. Yes. What is the estimate, you, your estimate, of bad loans for the banks going forward? You could not speculate on that. So how the can you say the banks are financially sound? The important thing is that risks emerge over the lifetime of the loan portfolio. And it is important that there is adequate capital there to absorb those risks. And by any estimate, the Irish banks are so well capitalised compared to any banks anywhere across Europe that I am confident that they can absorb any loans or any impairments that emerge in the ordinary course of business over the foreseeable Let future. Let me take you back to uh, like a couple of years ago. You were expressing concern, as I say, about these risky loans, about people getting loans six, seven times their salary. Why didn't you stop it? I most certainly did take a very decisive action because at the time, two years ago, did when you I was stop speaking that about that, you must absolutely provide choice to customers. And customers must be able to make decisions, inform decisions, and have these choices open to them. Our job is to assess the risks and to make sure that the system is able to absorb those risks, which I think the measures we introduced back in 2006 did. So you don't accept that the banks took any risks before banks, this crisis? It is part of banking that they do take Unnecessary? Risks. And it is absolutely part of banking supervision and regulation 
that banks are able to absorb the effects of those risks. And I believe the Irish banks are adequately, more than adequately capitalised and they're very resilient. Okay, and you've will said be that before. Let me move on, move on, on, move on to this guarantee. This guarantee yeah. gives an incentive to banks to continue whatever risky behaviour they want because the taxpayer is going to foot the bill eventually if anything goes wrong, right? Yeah, we're in an absolutely different environment now. This guarantee has brought a new world. It's a completely different situation. The taxpayer is there uh, since the government initiative. The taxpayer is there to guarantee the banks. And the, the, the idea behind that well, My is question to you is what are you going to do to stop risky behaviour in the banking sector? For example, will you stop dividends being paid out to shareholders? The government will and has sought the advice of the regulator and the central bank as to what the regulatory framework should be to ensure greater accountability is that, is that and yes transparency no? for the, the taxpayer. And uh, we are working on what the regulatory response should be. And in fact, as we speak, we have people okay. in the office to be working through the weekend. I'm not sure about the answer to that question. Sure, just, will to you make, do anything to, make sure to stop? That the government gets um, the appropriate advice so that the taxpayer can be reassured that the measures okay. and the scheme put in place under the Act um, gives assurance to the taxpayer okay. that they're. Pat Neary, is it moral for banking exec chief executives to be getting multi million dollar, multi billion euro pay and bonuses at a time when the taxpayer is taking the risk for potential? problems? Certainly that is an area executive pay that will be considered as part of the, of the requirements going forward and uh, is one of the areas that will be looked at and it will be included in the advice that we give to the Minister next week as My to how he might was, deal with that. My question was a lot of people that. out there don't worry about the regulatory framework, they want to know about the morality. I think what people out there want to hear me saying tonight is that their money is safe and that there is adequate liquidity in the system for them to go about their daily lives, to be able to meet their daily obligations, for businesses to have liquidity available to them. That is the important message and that is what the government has delivered through this initiative, that soundness and safety of people's deposits and that, that they can do their business properly. Final, final brief question. The uh, Minister Lennon is talking about potentially extending this guarantee to non-Irish headquartered banks. If that's the case, will you extend the extra regulation to those banks as well? I think that's something we have to consider and that will form part of the advice we give to the Minister next week on how best to proceed. Thank you, Pat Neary. Thank you. Miriam.